Okay, so last time we covered the Greek gods family trees, and that video went pretty well. You guys really enjoyed it, at least in comparison to a lot of other recent content I've been doing here. So we're going to be doing it again with the Japanese gods. And to not waste any time here, at the beginning of creation of the universe, the Koto Matsukami, or the Essentially, the gods who are the primordial gods of Japanese mythology were born in Takamakahara. Now, after several generations of gods being born, Izanagi, he who invites, and Izanami, she who invites, are instructed to sort out the chaos that existed because there was a bit of chaos that lingered from the beginning of creation, and I guess no one decided to attend to that, but yeah. They were given a special jeweled spear by the other gods, and together they stirred the chaos until the island Onogoro was created. The name of that island might be a bit longer, but I can call it Onogoro. It's not incorrect calling it Onogoro, so we're going to go with Onogoro. They placed a great pillar into the ground, and Izanagi, turned left from it, Izanami turned right from it, and they met in the middle of the pillar. Izanami spoke first, saying, what a fine young man, and Izanagi spoke second, what a fine young woman. Then they had a child, and that child was deformed, and this is blamed all on Izanami because she spoke out of turn, or she spoke first, and she wasn't supposed to do that. This scenario might change a bit, it might be perhaps that she speaks out of turn during their wedding, but the point of that story is that Izanami speaks out of turn, she's blamed for the child being deformed, they try again, do things the traditional proper way, being that Izanami speaks secondly, and knows her place, according to the Japanese culture, and boom, no more birth defects, the rest of the gods are perfectly healthy children. Izanami and Izanagi continue to create islands and more gods. Now at some point, Fujin and Raijin are created, so that makes them the children of both of those gods, so that you can see the connections there. And of course, Izanami is one of the original gods, so, you know, starting off the tree, at least as far as Smite is concerned. But then Izanami gives birth to Kagatsuchi, the god of fire, and Izanami is horribly burnt. She falls towards the earth and dies. Then she enters Yomi, and she's there for a bit of time, long enough for her to have a meal in Yomi, so she's not allowed to leave. And when Izanagi goes down to Yomi to see his wife and retrieve her, he can't because she can't leave. So sees if she can talk to the god of Yomi or the ruler of Yomi or the kami of Yomi to go ahead and see if she can be freed from Yomi. No, it doesn't work out. At least it doesn't work out because Izanagi was impatient and looks upon his wife early and is just surprised, scared, terrified by what he sees. He runs out of Yomi very quickly, seals Yomi with a great boulder, and Izanagi, you know, I mean, that's not the best look for Izanagi, and Izanami is pretty upset. She decides to take 1,000 human lives every day. Izanagi decides to birth 1,500 people into life. Something like that. Numbers close to that. Now, after his trip to Yomi, Izanagi felt pretty dirty and decided to take a bath. As he washed his left eye, Amaterasu comes forth. As he washes his right eye, Sukiyomi comes forth. And as he washes his nose, Susanoo comes forth. Whether they come forth in a similar deal to Zeus and Athena, as, you know, the children are fully grown, I'm not too sure. That would kind of be awkward, I suppose, but there you go, it is what it is. A few myths later, and Susano is banished from the heavens. There's a bunch of different variations as to what Susano does. He may go to live with his mother in the underworld, he may rule the seas as a storm god. Whatever he decides to do, the variation in which he recognizes that Izanami is his mother, which of course means that Tsukuyomi and Amaterasu are daughters of Izanami, so you can see the connections there. And now we move on to the interesting two, Kuzembo and Hachiman. Now starting off with Hachiman, during the second century, an emperor's Jingu was locked in a military struggle against Korea, and this was pretty much thanks to visions from the gods. Her husband had died, but left her pregnant, and she made sure to tightly wrap herself in bandages, as the child's birth may have interrupted the military campaign. She didn't want that. Especially considering the fact that she felt like she was called onto by the gods to commit to this war. Somehow, she managed to hold the baby within herself for three whole years. Jingu dreamt that when her son or child was born after the campaign was won, this would prove that the son was divine. And sure enough, these things happen. Hachiman is proved to be divine, or Ojin, as the son would have been called, was proved to be divine, and... Both Jingu and Ojin were 
considered to be Hachiman himself, the god. There's also a third goddess who's also considered to be Hachiman or related to Hachiman in some way, but we're going to be focusing on Jingu and Ojin. Now, the question here is, considering how much aid Jingu got from the gods, you know, entering the military struggle, getting a vision via a dream that Hachiman would be born or that his birth would prove that he's divine, would this make Hachiman one of the Shinto gods connected to Amaterasu or Izanami or some other god in the bloodline, therefore making a connection between him and the emperor, the ruling class of Japan. And I suppose the answer is yes, considering the fact that this was one of the ways that the ruling class was able to maintain their rulership. You know, having a claim such as I am connected to the gods, fairly irrefutable. Or at least, it's probably not a good idea to argue with that once it's established. So, as far as Japanese beliefs go, I would assume that yes, Hachiman would indeed be connected to the Shinto gods that would include Amaterasu, meaning that he bears some sort of connection to them. I'm not sure where exactly he fits into the family tree, but he's there somewhere. To further back this up, there's another story that I tell during Hachiman's lore video. You can go ahead and check that out for the full story. I'm just going to give you a quick version here. Hachiman prevents Dokyo, a Buddhist monk, from allowing the belief system of Japan to be converted solely to Buddhism. He does this through one of his servants or a messenger who claims that Dokyo's claim to the throne is a bit, well, no, Hachiman would not have wanted this, or the Shinto gods would not have wanted this, and Dokyo's claim to the throne more or less fades away, it doesn't work for him. And thanks to this act, Hachiman is credited with connecting Shinto beliefs with Buddhism, and is given the title of Great Bofista, or just Bofista. But the point here is that he was able to maintain Shintoism in Japan, according to the story. And I think the Japanese gods would have a great interest in having the people still respect and honor and pray to them. So I don't see why Hachiman wouldn't be connected to the Shinto gods, especially considering that story, but I'll leave that to you. It, it's not necessarily, I could be wrong about that. He might not necessarily be connected to the Shinto gods at all. He might be his own separate thing. It's just because most of the gods seem to be part of Izanami and Izanagi's family. They seem to be parents of all of the gods that came afterwards. So I don't see why Hachi Man would be exempt from that. In a similar way to that, some Japanese people believed that Kazembo was indeed some sort of water god or water kami. Some didn't, some chalked it down to some sort of legend. More similar to, say, the Tengu, for instance. But I suppose that comes down to what you'd prefer to chalk Kazembo down to, if you'd prefer to think of him more as a sort of marvellous creature, or if you'd want to think of him more as no, of a divine god. And So then, does that mean that he was created along with the other gods that Izanami and Izanagi Created, or is he a separate deal? But yes, that was more or less the family tree of the Japanese gods. I hope that you did enjoy. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more content just like this, go ahead and subscribe. And if you really did enjoy the content, want to help it grow and all of that good jazz, then go ahead and share it. That's always helpful. But until the next video, have a very good day. I have been Prime, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.